Acting without knowledge is dangerous. Knowing and not acting is wasteful. Well, my friends, gain the knowledge and don't be dangerous. And once you have that knowledge, don't be wasteful. Use it. And what knowledge are we talking about? Being able to follow price movement. That is the only thing we care about here. And we use historic movements and indicators, two simple ones, to help us follow where price is going and seeing what investor sentiment is. Now, let's talk about stocks first. Stocks, big down day for them, over 2% for the S&P, almost 3% for the NASDAQ 100. We have a red down candle for the week, not reaching the lows that we reached back on the 28th of January, but still heading down. Price percent oscillator moving down, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. We look at the two-day chart. Red down candle forming, first day of the latest two-day price percent oscillator, which had been flat, spiking over, going down, derivative oscillator, losing some upward momentum. We look at the half day and we can see where things have been sliding sideways and percolating up, dropping over. When I kept telling you, particularly yesterday, I remember saying, hey guys, please pay attention. The, the, the overall mood of the market is still quite strong going down. Why? Because you can look at the weekly chart and see it. You can look at the two-day and you can see it where the price percent oscillator in particular is. Very, very important. All things being equal, the market tends to move in the direction of what? The largest chart. That's why we use weekly vertical crossovers to tell us what the mood of the market is. So, it's down, down. Let's look at the NASDAQ 100, very similar to the S&P, down, not reaching the low back on the week ending the 28th of January, but down. Price percent oscillator moving down, derivative oscillator negative. Looks like it's losing a little bit of downward momentum still for the week. We look at the two-day, again, moving over, going down, red down candle forming, Again, lots of downward pressure. We see on the half day down in the morning, further down in the afternoon, price percent oscillator pulling away from the red signal line, which it had almost been crossing over at the end of the day on Wednesday and now spiking over going down on Thursday. Again, we look at the market's overall mood by paying attention to our largest chart and also the intermediate chart, the half-day chart just tells us intraday action, but it's good to know, but we're not making our trading decisions off of that. Now, what about 20-year bonds? Up 0.74%. Does that change the mood of bonds? No, bonds are still stroking down. Derivative oscillator heading down, price percent oscillator heading down on the weekly two-day. We can see a bit of a reprieve here after five strong stair-step down candles going into the basement. Price percent oscillators flattened a little bit. Derivative oscillator, very negative, lost a little bit of downward momentum. We had a crossover in the morning with strong up movement. I saw this in the morning, up over a percent, and then losing a lot of that in the afternoon. Still up 0.74%, but lost a lot and still below the two-day and the weekly trend line. So we'll keep an eye on things see how they move. What about gold? Gold up for the day 1.37%. Quite nice to see things just stroking up. Gold, you know, we had that weekly vertical crossover, went up for three weeks, did us well, then rolled over uh, for three weeks, sliding sideways for several more weeks, and then over these last two weeks, catching fire again, almost crossing over, going down when we had that weak week, ending the 4th of February, but then recovered. Price percent oscillator gaining upward momentum, hammering up, not reaching the high that we reached of, let's see, 178.85. How high so far? 177.58, not far away. So again, let's see how far gold will go. Is it going to find a ceiling around the 178.85, 179 mark, and then top off there and move down? Don't know, but Keep that in mind. Pay attention. Let's see how high gold will go. We look at the half, uh, the two-day rather, and again we had that two-day recross going up. It's done you quite right over these last few days, has it not? And again, 
quite beautiful to see. Price percent oscillator heading up toward the sky and the derivative oscillator likewise. Things are looking quite pretty. Sorry about that. Let's go to the half day up in the morning, maybe a little bit higher in the afternoon. So looking great. You can see all of those trend lines heading up. I love it. I love to see gold doing well. It's fun to trade. Okay, now let's lastly go to Bitcoin. Down for the day, 0.40%. I'm sorry, not 0.40%. Four full percent down. Now, we've had a couple of weeks where we've got green up candles not reaching the high of last week. Price percent oscillators negative and flat. Derivative oscillators negative, losing downward momentum. We had that two-day crossover, but I kept telling you, doesn't mean the down move is over in Bitcoin. I hope it is. I hope we bottomed out somewhere around the $37,300 mark or so, but popped up and now it's slowly devolving. Price percent oscillator is still going up. Derivative oscillators flat. First day of the latest two-day candle. Of course, we can see intraday where, again, things down for a day and a half, you know, moving up for a day, and then it just slowly devolving over the last two days, moving down. So again, we're waiting for what? We're waiting for Bitcoin to cross over on the weekly. That has worked so beautifully in the past with C changes in price and up movement. That is what we'll be waiting for as we move forward trying to trade off that two-day chart. Again, depending on your two-day chart can be difficult. So pay attention. Let's see where things are going. And again, we've not necessarily reached a bottom yet. This is just one day, but we still have downward pressure on that weekly chart. That is where we are, folks, as we end the day. I will be sending out to our Patreon members your 20 weekly vertical crossovers on the S&P 500 to give you something to look at tonight, analyze, and get ready to practice trade tomorrow. That's about 3.45 when you see how those markets are doing, looking for a jumping in point on your practice trade. One or two, don't overdo it, but again, all the best, my friends. God bless from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.